The more entertaining thing today, I ain't gonna lie to you, man. I was having a fucking blast. Uh, so last night after, you know, uh, Rick Ross debuted it, debuted his track, Champagne Moments, on our stream, he actually went to a performance. And at the performance, he wore a hoodie. And you'll see on the hoodie, it, it's Drake's face. Now, apparently, this is actually the For All the Dogs. Um, this is For All the Dogs. Yeah, yeah, that's for all the dogs merch. So he wore this hoodie to a show, and this is part of the performance here. Okay, uh, then there was a little bit of trolling that happened, all right? This is a little bit of trolling that happened. And by the way, uh, actually, we'll get to that in a second, but this is a little trolling that happened where he plays I'm on one. I want y'all to see him this nigga play. Let's do some real nigga shit. Let's go, baby. So he switches to BMF. Okay. Now, the the the, the hilarity didn't in, uh, finish ensuing. Then Drake liked the post. Okay, so clearly Drake saw it, and then and, and then um Ross responded to that and he was like he posted the picture of the the uh the like the t-shirt and he says champagne poppy which is drake's at name and he says who knows then he says bbl drizzy with the nose symbol again oh man here's the thing drake then responded by putting up a message to his mom or from his mom and his response to it and his mom says, Orbs, the internet is saying you got a nose job. You look the same to me in the kitchen today. I can't believe you would get one without me because I know you always wanted one. Don't tell me that you got tattoos without me and now this too. And essentially, Drake responds to his mom and says, I would have got, like laughing emojis, and he said, I would have gotten us a two for one deal if I went, ma. It's coming from Rick Ross, the guy I did songs with. He's gone loopy off the Monjaro. He hasn't eaten in days and it's turned him into an angry and racist. He's, he's turned him angry and racist. He's performing at proms for money. It's bad. Don't worry. We'll handle it. Then he adds Rick Ross. He says, Rick Ross, you're one nosy goof. Okay. So that was his response. By the way, if you don't remember the, um, how he mentioned on, on the record as well. Um, Ross said, you, you, you never wanted, wanted to be a nigga anyway. That's why you had an operation to make your nose smaller than your father's nose, nigga. Okay. And also Ross was in all my comment section, like trolling. He's like, who knows? You get what I'm saying? Anyway, uh, th this was reminiscent of Drake wearing a free Meek Mill, uh, t-shirt in the midst of, uh, that beef, by the way. I actually used the wrong picture here because this was before the Meek when before the beef when Meek was actually locked up. Because Drake wore it twice. He wore it bef bef when Meek was actually locked up when they were supposedly friends, and then he wore it again. Drake Meek free T-shirt, and then he wore it again here, which this is during OVO Fest, and they were obviously beefing that then 2015 OVO Fest, right? You could tell obviously here. He looks a little bit more in buff, short haircut, part in the hair. By the way, this is the GOAT version of Drake, too. Are we acknowledging this? The GOAT version of Drake is this version right here. This is this. Metro hacked my mic. Fucked up, man. Shit's crazy out here in these streets. Okay, cool. Um, uh, How much of that did y'all miss? 
basically, I was saying that uh, essentially after, you know, Drake showcase uh, um, put up that his mom messaged him, which, by the way, Drake, don't get mad. I'm only trying to be objective. Um, some people would say, nigga, that, you know, your mom was not messaging you, nigga. You wrote this message to your goddamn self. And obviously, I would be in the, the, the realm of saying, no, he didn't. Mama Drake, you know what I mean? She messaged him, except I did notice one thing. Uh, it, it is kind of unusual based on the message. If your mom says, you look the same to me in the kitchen today, it's 10 15, brother. If, he's, if your mom say you look the same in the kitchen today, did she just go in the next room to text you? But I do know you live in like a 400 room mansion. She probably can't find you after she sees you for that first time in the day. She probably got to text you. But that don't seem a little bit normal. I'm going to just be honest. Just be honest. I'm, I'm trying to be fair. Trying to be fair. You know what I mean? Like, like your mom don't see you in the kitchen. It's 10 o'clock in the morning. She sees you in the kitchen, which got to be for breakfast or something. And then she texts you. Uh, not saying you're a liar. But, yeah. Anyway. Uh, just to give a little credence to the people who probably think Drake is lying or whatever. Uh, who cares if his mom texts him? I think he was just trying to send the message. Nigga, I didn't get no fucking nose job. Right? Now, you're going to see some, like, uh, like pictures like this where they're juxtaposing, like, old pictures of Drake and newer pictures of Drake. I'm going to be honest with you. I think Drake nose is the same. I'm not, like, a noseologist. Um, and, by the way, I did hear some other people say he didn't get a nose job. He got a rhinoplasty, which I guess that's, like, also a different thing. Let me, let me look up what that is. Rhinoplasty. What is that? Let me see. It's a, It changes the shape of the nose. Let's see. Okay. It's kind of subtle. Oh, it just changes the shape. Uh, okay, okay, okay. What's that? What's that? What's the difference between that and a nose job? Okay. Is the shape of his nose different? Bro, like, it's kind of crazy. I'm, like, looking at this nigga's nose and shit. And then he also put up, he said, nah, nose. Then he at Khaled. I wonder what Khaled thinks about this. Khaled most famously, you know, Khaled been dick riding so crazy with Drake. That nigga said he like what Drake like. Well, Drake don't like Ross. Does he still like Ross? I got to find out the answer to that. Okay, anyway. Um, Ross did jump, uh, not Ross, 50 did jump in. He said, Manjaro makes you hungry and racist. We don't need this shit. Take it off the market, LOL. He was commented on basically backing up Drake, what he was saying. And then obviously here's the video, which, you know, I cut off previously, but this is the video of Ross clowning Drake. Oh, it's such a beautiful day. Me waking up from a nap. I just realized BBL Drizzy called his mommy on me. Uh, he shared their text messages between each other. Ah, uh, Cupcake Drake, tell your mama you stayed out past your curfew, white boy. You wanted to hang at the park with the niggas, smoke weed with the niggas while we washed our old school Chevys. White boy, you got a Chevy, white boy? I doubt it. But anyway, big nose, big nose. Boy, you had 25% body fat with a carved out six-piece stock. We know what time it is. That shit costs 40 bands. Stop. But tell your mama. Well, in Miami. Yo, this nigga got joke after joke. He said you got 25 body, 25 percent body fat. I mean, we say, old girl, tell your old girl she a beautiful lady. I told you that before, and I meant that. But you tell your mama, white boy, you stayed out at the park too late, and you can't call her when you get in this shit. This shit too deep to call your mama, white boy. <laughs> okay. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. And, again, I'm trying to be as fair as possible. I'm trying to be fair. And, by the way, this is a very petty. By the way, Drake, Drake hit me. So, uh, which I could imagine Drake is watching everything. So, I, I, I didn't even ask him about this. But he did He did hit me. He hit me. Uh, how long ago? Yeah, he hit me an hour ago. Wow. We're fucking late. And I guess when that, I was playing that, that High Whitney shit, he said that's AI. He said 100% AI. So, I'm going to take his word. But I ain't gonna lie to you. That shit is slick. Yo, Drake, I ain't gonna lie. You might wanna you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Like that's that's really the Drake bag I want him to get into. It's it's not necessarily that track. That's the bag I want him to get into. The slick talk, but direct talk, 
over some smooth beat, like, yo, make me feel like I'm like, you know what I mean, at the fucking, like, uh, uh oh. You know what Drake verse painted such a great picture for me? Written of the state scheme verse. Like, the state scheme verse was. State scheme verse was like. That shit was just a brilliant piece of art. Bothers me when the guys get to acting like the bras. Get, and he always got some like. Great saying too. Guess every team don't com come complete with niggas like us. That's why I see no need to compete with niggas like y'all. I just ask it when you see me, just speak up, nigga. That's all. Don't be ducking like you never wanted. Yeah. And, and and I'm gonna tell you where. Like right here. So nowadays niggas read just to sell a record. Spaghetti bolo knees. Like what the fuck? I don't even know what this is, nigga. <laughs> like <laughs> maybe I'm just basic. I only eat chicken tenders and shit like that and pizza. <laughs> Spaghetti bolognese in the polo lounge. Me and my, my G from DC, that's how I roll around. Like, I ain't gonna lie. I was, shit, I felt like I had like some Cartier glasses, like just eating some, I don't know, nigga. Like, it just felt felt exquisite, okay? That's why I, I want me to get in that back. I don't think he, if that nigga rap like how he rapped on Gold Roses, bro, except he's dissing niggas, bro, he's just shitting on them, skating, shit. Obviously, you know what I mean? I don't know if this beef is going to lend to that because this feels like the disrespect a ton. So you got to disrespect niggas. Like, you literally got to disrespect niggas. She got a thing for Chanel Ventus that I could... Yeah, yeah, he was doing too much. You know which flow that Drake got to get into? I was listening to it today. Drizzy, if you're watching this, check this out, man. You got to get back to the America flow, bro. Nigga, this shit was a masterpiece. This is how... I want you to bar these niggas up. Except, I get it, you got to disrespect, you got to be overt, because it's disrespect hot. Look at my history, I'm trying to see what's different from the guy in the rich of me. The only thing I see is custom owl from Tiffany's and some gunners that'll hit you up out nowhere like an epiphany. Really, that's it to me. Aside from the obvious, man, his changes in the scenery. Testing me is going to have my niggas testing machinery. They say that they happy, man. My man, that's not how they seem to be. The boy, he wildly. Uh, he wild and peaceful, rest in peace, Tina Marie. Ethics and values, mob traditions, old fashioned, monopoly action. Brody buying up bread with like he's still in Akron. A lot of pain, a lot of passion, a lot of relaxing while other niggas is overreacting. Oh my God. This shit is like a fucking, this shit is like the greatest shit ever. These are bars. Diplomatic community. Oh my sweet. This is, this is where I want him to decide, like dissect Kendrick. I don't know if it's going to be like, because again, I get it with the over disrespect shit, but I'm going to be very honest. I I don't think Drake, you know, AD made a good point yesterday and I was thinking about it. I don't, it, even though Drake, I think already got disrespectful. I don't think he really to go that disrespectful because I ain't going to lie to you, man. That nigga, you know how Pac started off like, that's why I fucked your bitch, you fat motherfucker. Like, nigga, if I'm him, like, I'm airing shit out like that, man. Like, that's why I fucked your bitch on my private jet. Yo, yo, nigga, I know you ain't talking. Yo, weekend, I had your bitch sucking my cock. Like, nigga, I'm wallet, nigga. I'm wallet. Anybody could get it, nigga. But I ain't gonna lie, I think I would go look at him different. Like, nigga, I would have been bad vivid with it, nigga. I gave her four rounds, nigga. She was begging to take the condom off, nigga. She swallowed my kids. Nigga, I'm saying everything, nigga. I don't fucked all you niggas hoes. All you niggas hoes done swallow my kids. I'm gonna make it vivid. Y'all niggas gonna relive that memory, nigga. Y'all gonna wanna shoot me after I'm done. I'm serious. Yo, Ross, I had your ex bent up like a pretzel. Like, I'm going in like that. Nigga, it's like that. <laughs> That's too much? I ain't gonna lie, man. Imagine Drake came out with some. That's why I fucked your. That's why I fucked your bitch, you nappy head motherfucker. <laughs> you said play diplomatic community? Nah, he went crazy on that. Oh, um, um, uh, uh, um, is like, I, I really think that's top tier, bro. I'm going to be honest with you. 
but diplomatic community, fuck them. Oh, oh yeah, 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 I like the energy on this. All that peace and that unity. Actually, I think Drake Loki sneaked this me on this one. <clears throat> but that's when we were seeing eye to eye. Then we became best friends. You feel me? Was it this one? No, yeah. He, he says, yo, because niggas started talking to me like I'm slowing down. Opinions over statistics, of course. Gas off journalistic. Come at me and you all you get is the ballista. Nah, he went crazy here. Booked a private room at Wally's. This, that's why I like Drake. Nigga, I don't even know what the fuck Wally's is. Where the hell is Wally's? This is how you know I'm not a strip club guy because I never was going to Miami at that time. The first time I heard Toots, Tootsie's, like, I thought Tootsie's was like a local club in in, in in Philly, the way how Drake said it. Like, yo, I'm, I'm at Tootsie's getting shoulder rubs. I'm like, what the fuck? There's a shoulder rub spot in Philly? <laughs> Stupid ass me. I got multicolored rings like the Olympics, of course, at award shows cutting through the tension, of course. Girls hugging me and asking me what this, what scent is that, boy? I be walking around at six like I invented it, boy. Yeah, who am I to do or die, the one with the fewest lies and the truest ties? Die! That's what I'm talking about. That's how we got to give it up right there. That little playoff for us, that's how you got to give it up. They try to compare us, but like a job straight out of high school, there's no you and I. Ooh, you, oh, yeah, 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 it's bars, it's bars, it's bars. It's bars. Somebody said Kendrick will be super disrespectful. And yeah, 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 Drake confirmed to me. He hit me. Say, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's AI. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna send the message clear to him. We want that type of smooth. Like, yo, chat. Am I backseat quarterbacking this thing too much too? Like, cause that's what I don't want to do too. Like, I'm a fan. He's my favorite rapper. I want this competition to be great. I clearly want him to win. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm sorry. Like, you feel me? Like, this is one battle we can't lose. But I don't want to put what, he's the artist. Like, you know, I, I've always, I, I learned that with my critique of, um, I think I learned that with my critique of, of, of For All the Dogs. Sometimes as an entitled fan, you start telling the artist what's good and what's the best and where they should be. And that might not be where they are. And honestly, sometimes you got to shut the fuck up and listen to the artist. Like, niggas, it's the reason why I've been listening to him. Like, no disrespect. Well, I guess it's disrespect to me. I've been listening to him for, for, for fucking 15 years, nigga. Let him rock. You know what I'm saying? But if I could pick, I do think I would want, like, a track like this. At some point. I'm not saying the next one. I just like this shit in the tuck. Yo, speaking of which, you know what I was thinking about today? And I was, I was about to ask him. I didn't ask him. Yo, was him and Ross never friends, bro? Yo, Lemon Pepper Freestyle was such a fuck. Like, when him and Ross rapped together, this shit was fire. I ain't gonna lie to you, a verse like this might do it too, bro. Yeah, hard just turned purple. 360 up front, it all comes full circle. Class photograph, Sandy had me in my Urkel. Patty Mahomes, by the fall short, a couple hundred. Signed, sealed, delivered. I fucked the notary public. She witnessed me signed off on undeniable numbers. Yeah, make uh, uh make a set sale in Croatia to get the leverage. Groundskeeper cutting the grass and clipping the hedges. I took two million out the cage down in the desert. Matthew, yeah, I ain't gonna lie. To this one of them too. Uh, I'm fucking with this. I'm fucking with this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, that's me. This is my selfish, personal, like, desire to have one of these type of tracks chopping Kendrick down I think the way he handled M Meek because Meek is stupid was great just make a diss song and hit him with high school insults is that a world tour or your girl tour nigga you get what I'm saying Twitter fingers turn to trigger fingers like those are kind of high school insults but it works versus a stupid nigga who can't make a hook to save his life because he rapped like he's ordering a McDonald's from the passenger seat of the fucking vehicle, right? So that was good. But I'm going to be honest with you. I really want Duppy Freestyle. Let's go to Duppy Freestyle real quick. And tell me if I'm standing too much because I got to play the next Rick Ross clip. Tell me if I'm standing too much. It's all good, though. Where does it go? Duppy Freestyle Lurks. Where the fuck is this shit at? Wait, where's the genius version of it? Here we go. Oh, it's right here. 
So if you rebuke me for working with someone else on a couple of these, what do you really think of the nigga that making your beats? I've done things for him, that nigga, that I never thought he would need. Father had to stretch his hands out and get it from me. I popped style for 30 hours and let it repeat. Now you popping up with the jokes, I'm dead, I'm asleep. I just left over my eye for, for putting pen to the sheets. Tired of sitting quiet and helping my enemies eat. Yo, I swear to y'all, you, you know you know my biggest problem with that whole beef with Drake and, and, and Pusha T is that niggas... Like, okay, cool. Like, yes, I'm I'm one of his biggest fans, and I, I, I award that battle to to Pusha T out of fairness because he didn't respond. And, brother, you, you, you got to have some type of barometer of fairness. But if we're talking about the actual songs that were dropped, yo, Story of Added On does not, this is not better rap on Story of Added On than this. But this is, like, great fucking rapping. Keep getting temperature checks. I know uh, my head overheats. Don't know why the fuck they listen to, uh, you niggas listen to Denim and Steve. Uh, must have had your infrared wrong. Now you're heading a beam. I like that line. Must have had your infrared wrong. Remember the, the song Infrared came before this. Y'all are the spitting image of whatever jealousy breathes. Don't push me when I'm in album mode. You're not even top five as far as your label talent goes. You send shots when I got to challenge those. But I bring calicos to the Alamo. I could never have a Virgil in my circle and hold him back because he made me nervous. I want to see my brothers flourish to their higher purpose. You niggas leeches and serpents. I think it's good that now the teachers are learning. Your brother said it was your cousin, then him, then you. So you don't rap what you did. You, don't, uh, you just rap what you knew. Don't be ashamed. There's plenty of niggas that do what you do. There's no malice in your heart. You're an approachable dude. God damn. Man, you might have sold uh, to college kids for Nike and Mercedes. Um, I think that line might be wrong. But you act like you sold drugs to Escobar. And, yeah, this is a type of this is a type of shit that, you know what I mean? But, of course, I ain't going to lie. He did fuck up here. I'm going to let it ring on you like Virginia Williams. And that nigga just start spilling tea. Okay, anyway. All right. Uh, those are type of, like, that's what I kind of want to hear. I, I I don't think Drake is really, like, Drake has some level of decorum that I really don't think he ref he would shed even in this battle, even though I know he knows he has to win this. I don't think he'll get on some Pac shit because I'm telling you, you know what Pac would do, my nigga? If I fucked all you niggas bitches, your wives, baby moms, everything, and y'all all mad at me, Y'all been pillow talking about me like hoes. I'm going to come on here and I'm going to party at your demise and clown y'all for being tender dick. Okay? Is that the term? Pause. Tender dick? Like, that's that's kind of pause. Ten, tender something? Whatever. Anyway. Pause. Anyway. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. L let's get back. Let's get back. And, of course, the shrewd operator like uh, Ross is, he's promoting Bel Air while talking to Drake. Here we go. Another one. Back to the luxuries of life. I might write a song that they call, who knows? Who knows? One thing about, um, I'm gonna say this. You niggas with them BBLs, you niggas, I'm speaking specifically to you niggas with BBLs. If you got a fake body, you got a fake mind, nigga. Leave that shit to them cute bitches. Walking around in YSL heels. Not you bitch niggas in OVO. The pastrami posse. Back to the luxuries of life. I might write a song today. Hey, did we find... Oh, yeah, he did say why he was beefing with Drake. But don't that seem facetious? But what, Okay, whatever. Anyway. um, Cool. So he says that later on in the night, he also says this because Birdman jumps in. Birdman jumps in by poster and story. Yo, Drake, I'm riding with you for life. I got your back. Surprise party. CMG, YMCMB, OVO. And, of course, Ross responds quickly by saying this. Hey, hey, hey. That's what Birdman House was at right over there. Stunner. That's where your house was at right there. The little island over there. Hey, hey. If you guys don't get uh, what he's saying, he's basically saying he's flexing on Birdman saying, nigga, I'm the real boss. You, your house used to be on that little island. Star Island is kind of like the premier island when it comes to Miami, from what I know. I, you know, if there's some real estate person who could tell me different, 
you let me know. But Star Island is Star Island. You get what I'm saying? Um, yeah. And by the way, he comes back in the comment section. He says, white boy, who next? Now, I, I, I did see some people talking about this. And I, I, I do want to, you know, I, I feel like I'm Drake's advisor, at least publicly. Not really. I'm just saying that. Um, when it comes to this, Drake, you got to watch out for the angle people are going to take, take uh, about you. People felt it was interesting and weird that Drake, who's obviously black, called Rick Ross racist. And I ain't going to lie. I was like. Oh, that might have to be a point. Like, I, I I don't really see black people call other black people racist. Like, you know what I mean? Like, black people call white people racist. You get what I mean? But maybe he's looking at it from an angle, yo, you're calling me white when I'm clearly not white, right? You know, because, look, you keep seeing Rick Ross keep saying white people, <laughs> right? He says, he even tagged it in my conversation. White boy, who's next? <laughs> right? Hmm. It's kind of interesting, man. Uh, you know, in one of these videos, you hear Rick Ross kind of doubt Drake's, you know, ability to make rhymes. And he kind of like vaguely brings up uh, ghostwriting, I guess. But we did see Ross on Drink Champ say this. And Drizzy, our relationship most definitely is real close. You know what I mean? I'm going to be honest with you. It's like you and Drake got an album together. We got, I'm, I'm going to be honest, I, I don't know how much music we got right. because it's so easy working with the homie. Mm. It's not a lot. I'm going to be honest. Uh -huh. We in the two percentile when it come to writers mm. and creators. Mm. It's called a two percentile. Mm. The two percentile. <laughs> yeah. This, listen, <laughs> if you if you're not ready for this. That's the album. <laughs> that's the album. Walk out of the room. <laughs> <laughs> you know, somebody walk out the room. Over. But the two percentile is when you walk into the room, you hear something, a beat, uh, a production that actually you actually love. Uh -huh. It can actually create it, think of it, create it, write it, and execute it right here. Uh -huh. Me and Driz. Okay. Yeah. So it, let's be clear. Uh, th this whole thing is kind of filler until Kendrick responds. We don't even know what the fuck. I, I, I'm, I know y'all y'all have all this faith in this nigga Kendrick. I really got zero faith in him. I really don't think that this guy is really trying to engage. And also, I don't think that even if we do get a track, I don't think he's prepared to go the long run. Let's be very clear, chat. Let's be very clear. Unless, did y'all watch UFC, was it last night? Y'all watch that? It was last night or the night before. Did y'all watch it? This shit, this is rap beef, brother. This is, I'm thinking scheduled for five. Five. And when I mean five, really it's about three. When I mean three, let's say three. You drop, you drop, you drop, you drop, you drop, you drop. What I mean is we don't care about nothing more of y'all music until this is a little bit crystallized on what's going on. After that, if the beef continues, y'all could keep this in each other on records on y'all albums. But right now, it's dedicated this time, okay? I don't want to hear Kendrick come drop, you know what I mean, like an album for his... No, no, no. This is... Y'all got to respond back to back. I don't have faith that Kendrick would want to go more than a round. Would want to drop two, three songs responding to what Drake is going to bring. Because here's the thing. Unless you, That's what I bring up the UFC reference. Unless there's a knockout, unless there's an ether, unless there's like a back-to-back -back where we're like, hey, game over. We don't care what you say no more. We're basically, we have declared this a winner. It's going to be like what you say, what you say, what you say, what you say. And I do believe that both men should be looking towards getting the song that is going to end all of this, right? Obviously, I think Drake has a formula for this. The formula is, yo, I'm going to make sure niggas is up in the club laughing at your goddamn demise. We're going to clown you as the bitch you are. And it's lyrical enough. It's potent enough. But everybody's going to going to fuck with it. If I was supposed to say what Kendrick has to do, if Kendrick recreates the moment on a solo diss song. 
that is potent as like that. Like he basically gets a, a damn hit song by with dissing Drake. It got it got some bop to it. It's fucking rocking and it's almost as potent as like that in, in the sense of as a song, but also has a bunch of disses. Yeah, Kendrick might people might be like, yo, Drake, we don't care. Even though I do think here's the thing, Drake has one advantage. He's the biggest rapper. So you can't like you can't really call the fight until he literally has nothing. Like he's just dropping songs and we're like, oh, that ain't it. That ain't it. That ain't it. That ain't it. So because he's the biggest rapper, he kind of also gets to dictate a little bit more when it stops, right? Um, here's the thing. What do I believe is going to be involved in uh, a Kendrick diss song? I'm, th th this is what I honestly think. I believe that Kendrick is going to try to attack Drake as... He's been purporting Drake to be, and it's going to be fraudulence. And I think he's just going to sum up everything we've heard before. He's going to say the same things. He's going to say, hey, your pen, your pen can't be compared to mine because you don't write certain shit. You're also some, uh, the pop guy. Oh, You've 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 sold out and compromised to get number one while I've been here and I think I'm number one and I never had to do it. You got surgeries, you got this, you I don't know. I don't know. I'm thinking of all the like you we could probably write down a list of things that we've already heard about Drake, but he's gonna probably put it in a form that seems aggressive, seems potent. Seems like, yo, I'm I'm going to get at this nigga, man. You get what I'm saying? Now, that to me is automatically expected. It's all about how palatable it is. Is it clever enough? If he's going for the hit factor, is this shit a bop? Um, that's kind of, that's kind of where I think it's going to be. Is it going to be remembered or not? Because I don't even know what a Kendrick Lamar diss song sounds like. So I said, Kendrick about to make the first conceptual diss song. Hmm. Yeah, no, like that's a hit. Like that's a hit. Like that is a hit. We, we have to acknowledge. Like that is a hit. Like that isn't stay scheming. But like that is a hit, 100%. The difference between stay scheming is like niggas used to play it in the club just only for the verse. Like that as a whole song is a hit. Niggas is fucking with the hook. They love Future's part. And then Kendrick, they like his part too. Like niggas was, yo, I remember when stay scheming drop nigga, like, niggas just wanted to make sure you were around, you you was with your niggas, and, like, that bitch you like was was looking at you, that you, that when, when that line came on and the DJ uh, unmuted it, bitch, you was a women shooting in the gym? Like, yeah, niggas just wanted to, you know, uh, you waited the whole song just for that one line, the whole song, like, the entire song. Like, you were just like, of course you knew Ross, Ross's part and the other shit, but it's like, you waiting for that one time, nigga. So when it's an actor submitted like that, it's really like that. It's it, it's a hit song. Like, nigga, what do you think? I'm blind? Like, people like the song. But they don't like the song. I mean, obviously, there's some people that like the song for the diss, but there's more people who like the song because hot beat, the beat is fire. Gotta give it to Metro, even though I don't like the nigga. And also, you future fucking slid on the shit. I'm sorry. So I said, Humble is not a diss song. Yeah, Humble ain't a diss song. Somebody said, the jig is up. Kendrick Lamar? Fuck is that? <laughs> Who the hell was he dissing on that? When was this shit recorded? 2012? The fuck? 
Picture plenty pussies throwing out pellet guns at me. Paranoia make it. Bruh, see, I'm going to keep it up being with you. Oh, Kendrick, listen, I really ain't even trying to give you too much advice because, nigga, you, like, you're probably in Zimbabwe, nigga, like meditating with monks and shit like that, get ready to come back at this. Let me tell you this, nigga. If you come on some diss song rhyming peas and shit like that, like, nigga, this ain't no, like, this ain't no lyrical, this ain't no five finger, the finger, five fingers of death freeze. No, nigga, get straight to it. Picture plenty pussies throwing pellet guns at me, paranoia. Ah, too many peas. Too many peas, nigga. You ain't gonna, nigga. Too many fucking peas. Get the fuck on out of here. <laughs> Pinnacle, YB, centerfold. Like, nigga, if you come on sound like Eminem, get out of here with that. But they hate to frame me as the Mona Lisa of rap. So retaliation's a must when we bend the block. My niggas dumping out the roof. Do do do. Driving past, guns blasting, shoot up the charts too. Uh, me, K, D O T, put T N T inside my. Ah, oh, hell nah, man. Hell nah. Hell nah. Hey, I'm telling you right now. I believe. I believe. Number one, Metro try to leak that that jumbotron shit popping song. They're going to come back with the ghostwriting shit, and I think they're going to play that into Kendrick's disc, guarantee. They're going to try to make it seem like you're the fraud, you don't write, you can't compete with the guy who writes, then they're going to try to dissect him. If you ask me the angle that Kendrick's going to take, hey, listen, you basically ain't rapping about shit, I'm rapping about a lot of stuff. Like, the same old, like, the same old, angle you would imagine from the guy who is hey my music screams artistry and activism and struggle and your music screams on the surface partying not that realistic to the what's really happening outside you get what i'm saying so, that's the angle I think he's really going to take. What do y'all think? I'm not hating on Kendrick. That's like, stop thinking I'm hating on Kendrick. I'm just telling you what the obvious angle. Yo, if, if Kendrick came with some crazy, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't even see. I don't even see Kendrick going the Pusha T route. Despite Drake mentioning Whitney, which is, you know, the name of his wife. I don't think. You, you see, Pusha T went the route of, let's go to Story of Added On. The Story of Added On. Which, by the way, is a great route to go, right? Like, hey, the guy who raps about fucking every bitch on earth, or he's always getting a new hoe, or heartbreak, heartbreak, you know what I mean? Even though, like, yo, my nigga, like, bruh, like, when, when, when do you get tired of the same game? You know, these guys at this point, they get married or whatever. Uh... Yeah, yeah, right here, right here. This was a great angle Pusha T took. Dennis Graham, stay off the gram. Bitch, I'm on one. You mentioned wedding ring like it's a bad thing. Your father worked, walked away at five. Hell of a dad thing. Marriage is something that Sandy never had, Drake. How you a winner, but she could keep coming in last place. That was a great angle to take. I don't think Kendrick comes like that, though. I think Kendrick is going to probably look at this. I have the most ammunition to dissect Drake as someone who is, in his eye, a fraud. Hey, you have created yourself by this success, and I'm going to be honest with you, a little bit of what everybody is saying, I think he's going to incorporate. You know what Ross said in his, um, Ross said basically in his diss song, well, Drake, if it wasn't for Memphis, if it wasn't for these niggas, if it wasn't for that, you wouldn't have been this. And it was basically almost saying this is where other people or other, you know, whatever in, in the culture have co-signed you for you to get to the position you are. So don't act like you're bigger than than whoever or us because, and not that Drake act like he's bigger than the culture, but it's like, don't act like you, you're bigger than the program, my nigga. Do you get what I'm saying? Um, I think 
if I'm Kendrick, that's how I would come at it. Yo, my nigga, this is how you got to be the position you are, right? Wayne co-signed you. Jay Prince defended you. Um, Future stamped you. Like, you know what I mean? Like some of these, some of these things that, that could kind of like almost be thought of as the building blocks to how do you get to be Drake, who is this international superstar, the closest thing to, to Michael Jackson, at least in the rap world or hip hop period. That is so palatable across the, you know what I mean? What do y'all think? Yeah, it's going to be some layered message, which is going to be like, yo, check this out. Yo, this is like, yo, the thing that I don't think Drake, and I don't know how we could respond to this. Kendrick is going to try to reframe this as this is some real, this is real rap right here. This is real rap. This is not that shit you do. And I do think the culture just by dick riding, honestly, is just going to always side with Kendrick. Like, people just look at Kendrick as, like, some very pure artist that because he doesn't drop a lot, you don't see him pop out with, like, maybe a song like 2C Slide or, like, Hotline Bling. They look at him like a very pure artist. Like, nah, this nigga really be on his shit. Like, yo, he don't compromise. And that's the angle I think he going to go. Like, yo, bro, what the fuck? Somebody said a hard part four. Somebody said, have you talked about Simba dissing J. Cole? Bro, J. Cole's on the bench, my nigga. Like, at this point, yo, J. Cole, pull up a chair, man. Let's talk about this damn beef, man. Yo, J. Cole, stop it, bro. We don't even want to talk about J. Cole, man. Like, God bless that individual, brother. God bless that individual. God bless him. You know what somebody pointed out to me today? Actually, uh, annoying pin or whatever. Oh, I I I'll give you the other. You know, I got to always try to be fair somewhat. Uh, we do have who kid who says more is coming soon. So stay tuned. More is coming soon. By the way, okay. his baby mom said this. Who say I'm a hot? I'd rather be a hot than to be a cop. Bet that. I'd rather be a hot than to be a cop. Poor. <laughs> don't rest me. Please don't rest me. Mr. Officer, Mr. Officer. That bitch pull them cuffs out and cuff me. Like your daddy would when it's mate in season. Oh, tell that, tell that police go pull his, tell that cop pull his cuffs out and cuff me. Like your daddy would do when it's mate in season. This is a sexy Saturday. This okay, she's just chatting. Hey, you know I also realize Drake push up. You know I realize 